So Blights in Monster Hunter are very similar to status alignments, where once they are inflicted onto you, they will cause an aberration to the player that can either slow you down or cause more damage the longer they stay on you. You can tell you have one by either looking at your health bar, looking at your stamina bar, or generally looking at your body to see if anything is irradiating from it or something is happening to the visuals of your stamina or health bar. One thing to be aware of though is that abnormal statuses and elemental statuses both give off the same near effect as each other. So, I quickly put together a quick image of what Elemental Blight's signature icons look like, and what the abnormal statuses look like as well. I've also put in some of the sure signs of what Elemental signs look like in game as well, to give a brief understanding of what to look out for when you're in game. Now, getting rid of these aberrations are very much simple in terms of just using a null berry, which you can pick up in the wild easily, or let them go by yourself over time. Although, a few of them will require you to use other methods if you can't use the null berry in time, such as Elemental Mantles, Cleanser boosters, blight resistance gear, or using the volume maneuver to get rid of Pacific Blight. The current blights we have in game all vary from monster to monster, but each one have a varying degree of how they will impact you. So firstly, let's have a look at the fire blight, which can be applied to you by monsters that uses a fire attack, like Teostra, Vathlos, or Anjanath. This blight, once applied to you, will slap your health away over time, and will eventually go by itself if you don't do anything about it. You can tell if you have it if your body is literally on fire. Now, it's recommended you get rid of this blight straight away, as continuously using help while fighting a monster can make it a whole lot harder for you to stay focused and damage said monster. Getting rid of this blight is quite simple. Just go on the ground and roll around three times, sometimes two, sometimes one. Or you can also eat a no berry, which will get rid of it straight away. You can also wear a fireproof mantle that prevents such blight from ever happening. However, it's on a limited time duration, so make sure that when you do put it on, you do it before the monster either uses the fire attack or is about to use the fire attack, not before. Next we have the water blight, which can be applied by a monster that uses water attacks, such as Geodatos. This ability will reduce your stamina recovery, making it incredibly hard to run away or use attacks that require your stamina use. Considering the monster you're going up against is based around water, which slows your movement down anyways, you can see this blight and slight environment hazard works hand in hand. So to count on them, you can either wear a waterproof mantle, which will allow you to walk through water with ease, and prevent you from getting a blight, either eat a no berry, or wait for it to wear off. Next up is the Thunder Blight, which can be applied by monsters that have thunder based attacks such as Kirin or Toridachi. This ability allows the others come in two phases. Firstly, once applied, you will receive a static effect on your body, and a lightning mark above your health bar. The second phase activates if Kirin or any lightning monster hits you again with a lightning attack, to which it will stun you indefinite. Now, this is something you want to avoid very much, as it leaves you defenseless and your Palico won't be able to hit you out of the state so easily. So this would be something you have to get out on your own. So ideally, it's recommended you bring a light boom proof mantle to help negate this, no berries, or wait for it to go by itself, which would then require you to play it safe from fighting the monster. Next is the Ice Blight, which can be applied to you by monsters that use ice attacks such as Legiana. This ability will make you use up your stamina a lot more quicker, to which can be very problematic when facing Legiana, as the monster has fast hitting attacks, to which you will require you to dodge a lot, so in a sense, just make it perfect for the monster. You can tell if you have it or not if your character has a kind of misty shroud on them. Now, countering this, you can use the basics of Ice Proof Mantle to negate the blight for a set time, no berries, or stay on the movement and dodge at the right time, which shouldn't be that hard to do against this monster. You can also wait for it to go away itself, but this may hamper you down depending on the weapon you're using, especially if it's a weapon that uses a lot of stamina. Lastly, we have the Dragon Blight, which isn't a very common blight for monsters except for Xeno and Devil Joe, who are the only two in the world that actually possess and use this ability on you. What this blight does is stop your weapon from using its elemental abilities from working on said monster. So, if you're using a Dragon Elemental weapon against Devil Joe for example, and he hits you with one of his attacks that causes aberration, then all it would do is stop your weapon from doing elemental attacks and convert it to just a raw attack, which means you do half damage. Now personally I don't see this being a major problem, as as long as you have a good amount of attack value for your gear set then it won't make that much of a difference in the fight. You may lose a bit of extra damage because of the split, but it's not something that many players have noticed or in any case need to worry about. And if you are someone that's focused on pure elemental and you do get hit by this, just make sure you bring some null berries with you and you'll be completely fine. And that comes to the end of the video. As you can see, all the blights you have to fight against can be avoided and countered by either being aware of the monster's attack or bringing the right gear for the situation. 
If there's anything you're confused with, then do leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll do my best to help you. But once again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.